usually I'm sitting there on the side. And uh, today we're going to go, when we do this, usually Martha comes up and reads the Bible verses because she reads real well. And so it's clean and you'll understand it and you'll at least go away with something from God. Uh, but this morning, uh, Kenny was going to come up real quick and share with us real quick before we get started. And I uh, kind of mentioned a little bit about it. And so it's, it's, I think it's continuous with what we've been seeing from Josh and Nina and all that. Oh, and hey, by the way, before that, hey, isn't Josh and Nina awesome? I mean, especially, especially Nina's prayers. I've been asking her to pray, pray in public and out loud <laughs> forever. So this is like a real, to me, this is just like a dream day at this point. I thought it wasn't going to happen. The first time I got up to speak here, um, I went back and had her pray me in and you know, before I came up. And it was the most awesome prayer. And I, and I said then, I thought it was just because she was short, because I had to be bent over, and I was like prostrate on the ground and hearing directly from God bent over. But uh, it wasn't just that. She was really that good. And anytime she prays, it's just awesome. And, and people have a real gift. And I've thought since I first started coming to this church, that's a real power couple there. They really both have the presence of God in them, and it's neat to see. So it was kind of... It may not have meant much to y'all who don't come here very often, but it was a big deal for me to see her get up there and pray, and, and it's just what I always knew it would be. It's just an awesome prayer, and she just knows how to talk to God. And, and Josh, I really like how he brings up what's happening right at the moment and being able to share what's going on. So Kenny is going to come up just to keep that going and do the same thing. We figure you know how to deal with a mic. Okay, so um, most of y'all know that for the probably five, six years I've been here, back to my spot up there, and uh, it's always been a pleasure to be up there and just serving with, with my music, looking out at all y'all, getting to know those faces, getting to just fall in love with some people that have just been amazing. And uh, y'all noticed I'm not up there. Things aren't going my way right now, but they're going to go God's way. We're going to see how that goes. But uh, on that thread that Josh was on, part of me got a little bit bitter because I wasn't up there anymore on the worship team. But at the same time, he hit another thread. I'm sitting out there with y'all now and uh, watching Roger just be Joe Cool up there on his base. And uh, I get to see all y'all just face to face every day. And just concentrate on the just the loving people that are in this church and the family that I've had for years now. And uh, in the process of all that, I've made some really good friends. Just recently, I've uh, met a couple of angels. Um, I was feeling pretty down. And uh, these two, you know who you are. You have made such a difference. And how I have felt. And uh, everything's going to be okay. This isn't over yet. You'll see me back up there because I'm just that stubborn. But um, I love y'all. I love everyone in this church. I mean, this, this church has just been home since the first day I found it. I mean, I think it was the following Monday. I called Steve and said, um, can I get a membership in your church? I mean, the very next day I called. And I talked to Steve and said, he said, come on. And we've been here ever since, and it's just been amazing ever since. And you people are just amazing. But uh, you two girls, and my wife, of course, has always been there for me. But uh, I've met some angels that uh, have really just knocked my socks off as far as, okay, you're going to sit around and feel bad for yourself? Nope. You're going to teach some people how to play guitar. You're going you're gonna to use that for something else. God's got another plan, maybe. But uh, thank you. And thank this whole church, every one of y'all. I just love y'all so much. Thank you. For, and we're, things are going to be good. Thanks, big Thanks, big guy. Yeah, it's kind of a... Is anybody... Is this, is this anybody's first time to be here? Has hadn't been here before? Yeah, this is really different. So <laughs> it's a... It's, if you, if you kind of go, wow, this is not like a normal church. Well, it's even not like a normal 1012 church. And uh, so, the, uh, so it is a bit unusual. But it was one of those things of Kenny, Kenny was saying that, uh, Nina coming up to speak, and now Kenny's saying that. Uh, this morning, early in the morning, I don't know, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, I got in an absolute panic. 
not about this and not, not I'm kind of thank God he's gotten me over this about being nervous about speaking but but it was really panic about something that had significantly changed in my life my mom recently passed away and there was something she was praying she would always pray for us and she would pray for us uh, all the time about specific things and she, my mom was one of these people who really prayed you know and we you know and God listened you know so with it she having that in your life and knowing certain things are covered is just a huge deal because you just feel that security. And this morning, all of a sudden, I realized, oh, my gosh, we're having this one reoccurring problem that we've never had before. And, oh, is it because mom's not praying for us anymore? I mean, I know God has us covered and knows what our prayers are. But I just thought, oh, what do I do? This is a significant change. Part of what I'm thinking about is the season's changing and time's changing where all of a sudden, you know what? Everything doesn't stay the same. Ecclesiastes talks about it. There's a season for everything, and there's a time for everything, and sometimes that time changes very abruptly with a diagnosis of lung cancer, with Kenny's physical issues, which are just out of the blue, and nobody really knows what to do with, but they're prominent and, and uh, tough. And so we, we have that in our life where we we have those moments of change that nothing stays the same. I thought, well, what is going to happen? And, and, you know, then I got back into what we're going to talk about today, and hearing from God always calms me down. But we got here, and we just did, I don't know if you all know this, we didn't know it for three, four years of coming here. There's a 10 a.m. prayer that they do before church. We just never got here at 10 a.m., so we didn't know it existed. Somebody asked us about prayer time. I said, it would be nice if we do a prayer every now and then before church. And then I got announced that we do that every week. And if you come here a little bit before 1030, you might know that. And uh, so we did that and got that through the prayer. But we did the prayer this morning. And people prayed for exactly what my mom used to pray for, for us. And it was just so comforting and so relaxing in knowing, hey, just turn it over to God. Have the courage to get up and, and tell people that you're hurting, that there's a problem in your life. And, and those people, especially those people that are the body of Christ, that are us, all of us in this room, that are together, unified as brothers and sisters, that all of us can at that point help each other and bring that into prayer when one of us, like my mom, gets called home. But now all of a sudden, instead of just my mom, I don't know how many people were there, 10 people were there praying in unison. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, it's gotten even better. So, and then have that peace about that. Then Kenny asked to share the same sort of thing, and Josh talking about the same thing. We've had a lot of change here just this, to create this time this week. And I, I'm with, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit here going through videotape music, you know, because I heard people across the way singing like, like I did. I was singing like I'm in my car and nobody can hear me, and I made sure this mic was turned off, so I'm guaranteeing none of you would hear me. And uh, so, because if there was a thought that you could hear me, there's no way I'd even speak out loud, you know, sing out loud. So with it, having all that going on, it's really a neat thing that, that God says we have a cover. So we've got the Holy Spirit present here today and with us today. And there's people here that have inspired all of us at times. And that's what the body of Christ is about. And, it, and it's about it, and it's so simple that I wanted to cover a couple of the simpler things in our faith. Because all of you sort of know it. We do the Tuesday night. Uh, God Talks. <laughs> and, and Tuesday Night God Talks is all over the place. It's anything from a very simple, we have some animated videos that we'll play now and then. The whole idea of the whole God Talks was that we would she get people to understand there's a whole lot of material out there. As bad as the internet is about sending pornography and violence into our homes, just unabated, just coming out, it also is very good about bringing God's will, God's purpose, knowledge, wisdom, true wisdom, also brings all of that too and we thought we'd start pulling that out on Tuesday night so everybody could get exposed to all the things that are out there that you may know things that you didn't know before sometimes it's very simple and it's a great simple message <laughs> recently we went through a whole thing on church history for about three four months mm -hmm. and uh, it was like seminary level uh, study on church history it wasn't easy and a lot of people were not terribly excited with it uh, smiley was really happy when it was over and so it really made his day. And, and I'm not saying because he feel he accomplished something and, uh, and was, had this in-depth idea. It was because it was done, you know, so he was happy about that. But with it, that's sometimes when you really start studying our faith, God is amazingly complex and amazingly deep. 
And understanding that complexity and starting to be made aware of it is what really starts to help you understand how big God is. But sometimes you get so focused on how big God is, you forget how personal he is and how simple he is with his message, and that the message is simpler than any other faith that's ever out there. It's just that it's contrary to the way we think. It's upside down from how we think of things. And so <laughs> I, over, I don't see on the side that far around very much, so I, I wanted to acknowledge I do know you're there. Um, but that if all of that is so important, and all of that does come to you where you really start to understand that, that I, we thought we'd do that. So Martha's going to read three different sections out of the Bible and just see how they all interplay and how they intertwine and how they come together. She'll read the long, the full chapter. So it's, that's why I like her to read. I like to have it, you hear it in context instead of me just pulling one verse out of here, one, uh, one little paragraph and then not understanding the context it was in. So that's why Martha reads a little longer. So if you'd read Matthew first. Okay, I don't know what the third one is. I didn't give that to the folks in the back because I oh. there were only two. Oh, but that's all right. Then read the two. Okay, we're starting in Matthew 9, uh, 9, 9, 9. It's the calling of Matthew. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Yep, and then if you read on. And the next in section Mark. is in Mark. The greatest commandment. Mark 12, verse 28, the greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You're right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Thanks. Thank you, kiddo. Then I know she does the voices and everything, so it's, uh, I can keep track. The, uh, the simplicity of what we're talking about, and that's what God's been really pressing on me, partly, I think, because of us doing the Tuesday night. You get researching and studying so much, and you keep getting studying and studying, and you get really to where you have a good understanding of God, and you have a good, uh, at least from what the world knows about him you still always understand that he's so much bigger than you and that there's so much more all encompassing than you can even possibly fathom. So there are times in the Bible where it does just say that, you know, my answers are above yours. You know, who I am, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And you just start to recognize that and say, okay, I'm, 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 I'm at peace with that. Early on in your walk, you may not be. Early on in your walk, you may want God to explain his position. You may want God to explain deeper and deeper and, that, and that's where you start getting religion and theology and you start getting all these things that people rail against, against the church of saying, ah, I don't like religion, I'm just spiritual. Oh, I, you know, I don't want to have to go to this and that's all the do's and don'ts and it's just how to live your life and it's looking down on people. That's where all of that kind of stuff comes from. But realize it's always just people throughout history that have always just been coming to grips with their faith. They understand God. God uh, the God of Christianity, the the God here and says God is one. The Lord our God is one. That God is one of those things that 
wants to, God wants to, as a spirit, talk with us, be with us on a daily basis, all throughout the time. He wants us to lean on him. As Josh says, lean into him. God, this is what God wants. He wants us to do these things with him. Why? Because he loves us. Just like, you know, seeing the kids in here during the praise, I really kind of, I think it's kind of nice with the tape music because the kids can just have fun and enjoy the tape music. And it's not like, you know, the parents you know, would have to feel a super response about distracting the people on stage or Kenny or things like that. It's a chance for the kids to just enjoy their parents here in church and enjoy the music here in church. I, I love it. I love looking around and seeing the kids. You know, it's just one of those things that's really enjoyable to see. Well, that's how God sees us. And honestly, I, I've seen how I behave at times throughout the day. And it's not much better than any of the kids that are screaming and yelling and carrying on. I mean, God, I think, looks down on that and goes, oh, my gosh. You know, what's with this guy? How much have I taught him? How much have I shown him? And still he behaves like this, you know. And it's, but he loves us and he wants to. And he wants to be with us that way. And so he, he offers us really simple things. Our faith is a very unusual faith because it's based on faith. So our, our faith, what God requires for us to be saved and be with him always, is that we just have faith. That we step out, we hear him. We, you hear me speaking today and you go home. You hear something on the radio and you go home. You, you're out at work and somebody says something contrary to the normal, you know, I, so I don't do this full time, so bitching and moaning. I'm sure there's a better way to say that. Um, the, but the normal, you know, instead of that normal stuff at work all day long, that's what you hear. You hear somebody that all of a sudden brings light to work. And it's like, well, that was nice. Or you see him do something nice for somebody. Or like I had one of my guys at work saying, we're going through all this with a move and moving the location. He goes, doesn't it feel like just a new beginning that God could do anything in this building? And it's like, yeah. You know, I always saw the negativity of moving and just how much work it is and what a pain it is. And I never really thought about, oh, it's also that new season. It's a chance to turn over and do something new. We have a whole new group of people to talk to and to share our faith with. And never didn't really see it that way. I saw it all as negatives. And so that kind of really helps you out at that point to understand it. But, but when you see those things, you start to realize God's really real. God's really there. Jesus did die for you so you could go before God, a perfect God, just as you are, without having to change, without having to worry about all these things. You'll need to repent of your sins, but that doesn't mean you necessarily need to change who you are. God loves you. But there are things in your life that he's going to then work with you once you make yourself available to him that is going to make you better. Why does it make you better? Why do the challenges and some of the stuff you go through is so difficult? We studied that last Tuesday. Blessings and curses. There's times God is just really blessing you. And that's when you let him take what you have and lead you and guide you and take you to the best. And at that point, as he's taking you to the best, that's when you're blessed. When are you cursed? When you decide that this is what you want and you'll have it at any cost. And you just don't care. I just don't care. This is what I want. And you know what? I should be made happy. I should be the one who is happy in this. You know, so many people say that you talk to some of your unsaved friends and you're thinking about leaving your wife. You're thinking about doing something that you know you shouldn't be doing. And you go to that one friend who you know will say to you, well, but are you happy? Because if this is going to make you happy, that's what you should pursue. Nobody should go through life unhappy. Well, no. Then you go to your friend. You call the pastor at the church. You call your friend that has a responsible life and is not just there to say whatever you want to hear, but actually has some fundamental truth in their life. And they say to you, you know, there's better things than just the immediate gratification. There's better things for you out there. And as you start to see that, you start to realize that. And you walk with God, and you know more, and you know more. And that's what starts to really change your life. And that's when you, that's, so you have all this, this real conflict that's out there in Christianity and in faith today. There's all this history, tradition, theology, religion that's gone on where it was just people over time. Give people a little break. They were like us throughout history, just as flawed as we are. And they were trying to figure out this God thing. And they were revealed certain things, but not everything, and only because we can. If you think that God's not revealing everything because that's the way he is, well, that is. It's the way he is. He can't release everything to us. But he gives everything we need to really know him and to know our brothers and sisters like in this room. And so with that, 
as you're sitting there with that and you're looking at that, you say, well, then what's the easy part? Well, look at what this, what's going on in here that Martha read from on the greatest commandment. What's going on there in context is one of the church leaders, the Pharisees, one of the leaders of the Jewish faith for that area that was very diligent on making sure all the rules were enforced, all the laws were enforced, the traditions were enforced, just as much as the rules given by God himself, they put their traditions equal to that footing, to the footing of scriptures and to the footing of God's revelation, just their traditions. And so they were, these guys were out there making sure you've got to wear your clothes this way. You've got to attend you know, Saturday night services this way. You've got to do all these things very specifically. And they were creating this, this block between God and the individual. But in fairness to them, they had seen things over time and were remembering the good things and forgetting the bad things and, and trying to figure all of this out. And so this Pharisee comes up to Jesus, and as Jesus is standing there, it, they're wanting to trick him. They want him to get him to say things that are contrary to either tradition or the scriptures. Because if they do, they can execute him. They can get rid of him. He's creating all kinds of problems. He's telling people that they don't need him. That, that as I talked with my friend Jim, that's there back on sound, I was asking him, I said, I don't really understand this whole Catholicism thing. I don't really understand. And I asked him about change with his faith. Because once he started to realize he could go to God direct, he could read the scriptures direct, he didn't need a church in between him, but it sure would be nice to have a church to help him. And so that's when you start going, oh. So that's, in that context, that's what this is happening. This guy's coming up trying to catch him in a trick so they can get rid of him, so they can keep the status quo, so they can keep everything the same, so they can keep people under control, they can keep their jobs, their source of income. These people lived well. They had things. You know, they wanted to maintain their status. So he comes up here and he asks him this question, and the real trick is, he asks him which is the best commandment, which is the, most, uh, the greatest commandment. So we have, most of us have heard of the Ten Commandments. Moses has given the Ten Commandments. And it's kind of a trick question. Which is the greatest amongst these? Because they teach they're all equal. And they prob probably all are, which is nice. But this is a trick question to try and trap somebody in what they do and do not know about their faith. And so with it, he then comes up and asks them this question. And Jesus, instead of picking one of the Ten Commandments, this is that example of just how simple our faith is. This is just how simple our walk really can be. One of the, so it says to him, he asks him, which is, which is the most important commandment? And Jesus says, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. There's one God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. And if you do these, it says this in one of the other ones, I think in Matthew, that said, and if you do this, you do all of the commandments and everything that the prophets have always taught. So basically what he's saying, everything that God has ever presented to man throughout all of history is summed up in these two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. He's one. There is one God. So this is not... Love the Lord, your God, the one you made up in your mind, the one the world is telling us now is, well, that's not my God. My God is, we had a family member that said to us once, well, our, my God is a woman, and she does this, this, and this. And I was like, well, that's good for you. I, my God isn't man or woman. My God is spirit, and he is all and universal, and I don't have any say in who he is, but he has a lot of say in who I am because he created me. You know, you sit there and go, oh, Okay, well, the Lord your God is one. There is one out there. If you're not finding him, if you're not following God, if you're not walking with him, you might be following the wrong God. You might be following a small G God, a little God out there, a God of your own making, not the capital G God, the God of the universe. That could be a self-check. Things are just not working with you. Look to see if you're following the right God. But then in this one is love him, then with all your heart. Not, I don't see obey. I don't see do these things. Yeah, there are, we do submit ourselves to God. We do submit our lives to God, and then we really start walking with him. But I don't see that as the first thing. I see love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And, it's, and, and so that's what we do. That's our simple faith is, who is the real God? Oh, okay, I'll go down and check this out. I was not afraid when I was really get just leaving the folks' house 
to start looking at every other religion that was out there and start seeing if it was true or not. Like a lot of people in their 18 to 20 something, you think you know it all and your parents don't know anything. So I'm gonna go out and find the real faith. So I started looking, looking, and there were inconsistencies and there were problems and the more our faith comes around, every century, every thousand years that pass, the Christian faith makes more sense and displays goodness and love and truth more consistently every, every year that passes. Why? Because God's constantly revealing himself and we have memories unlike animals. We remember the past, we remember our past and we learn and we have language and all of that stuff is important things God gave us that separates us that we can just look around in the world and see. So with that, that's part, that's our simple faith. When you leave here today, love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's not the golden rule. That's not don't do unto others. You know, what is it? I can't even remember what it is now, how it's said it like with Buddhism. It's like, you know, don't do anything to anybody else that you don't want them doing to you. So in other words, don't treat somebody like, you know, garbage and uh, because you don't want to be treated like garbage. Jesus is calling. It's high. Do unto others as you would want, as you would do to yourself. Not even as you would have done to yourself, but anything I'm going to do for myself, holding money aside, uh, food aside, hiding things from my wife, all that kind of stuff, I'm not going to do. Why? Because I don't, because when I look at that kind of thing, I'm going to do for her what I would do for myself. That's a very high calling, but it's very simple. Is Would I like somebody to do, you know, would I like Kenny to do this for me? You know, it's like, well... Would I do this for myself? And it's like, no, if I wouldn't do that, well, you know, so I mean, this is a simple thing, but it's a very broad concept that can be worked around. The, uh, but in that, that's the simplicity of that. The other part about that simplicity, why I had Martha read that next one was, Jesus went on from there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told them. And Matthew got up and followed him. She read that in context. Uh, you know, she, we understand Matthew's a tax collector. He's a hated person. Trust me. I had dealings with the IRS once. I hated the tax collector. I know I'm not supposed to. I know I'm not supposed to hate people. I hated that guy. And, uh, and his phone call came in. I didn't look forward to it. I actually had to go through and ask for forgiveness for that and go to God and say, I got to learn to forgive that guy. I got to learn to forgive those people. You know, and it was hard. So when I read that one, that one I get. But the, the community didn't like him at all, and they hated him. And here's Jesus, this great leader who's doing miracles, healing people, teaching ways they've never taught before. And he goes walking by the tax collector booth. And as he walks by, he looks up and sees Matthew in there. And he knows this is the guy who's going to pen this book of Matthew. He knows this guy is not only that his heart's right and that he needs, he needs God in his life and that he'll be useful for God's purposes. Jesus sees that in that instant as he's walking by because he's God. And he sees this and he looks up to him and he just says, follow me. He does the same thing for us. He brings you into church today. He does something with you. Uh, Kirsten, that's here, you know, came into church one day when things were really going rough. You know what she did? She just followed him. No big, no big lessons, no big teaching. It's inspired me every day since. I mean, it's one of those things that just inspires me every time I come into church. That's why I love seeing you all sitting over there. It's just great to see. And so it's one of those things that when you start to see this, that that's all you got to do is just follow God. You want to know what you have to do? I remember hearing people sometimes say, well, I'll come to church. I got a few things I got to clear up first. I got a few things I got to take care of. I'm like, what does that mean? And they're like, well, you know, there's just some things that God's not going to want me around until I get this stuff cleared up. Really? <laughs> he just looks at Matthew and says, follow me. Matthew was the worst of the worst for their community. And Jesus just says, follow me. And that's all we're supposed to do. So, you know, we have loved ones. We know people here who have loved ones back home that aren't coming to church. They won't come to church with them. They're just not going to do it. Well, you know what? That doesn't mean you don't just follow me. You get up and you follow God. And sometimes they see that through that inspiration. They'll follow you along. And you know what they would do? They would follow you to church. This is really how simple our faith is. Follow me. Just decide today as we leave through here. I'm going to follow God. Martha asked about the third thing. And the third one was real simple. I, I really like love this one. This was one... It's a proverb. 
and everybody knows Proverbs are typically just little bits of wisdom, nuggets of wisdom. Uh, there are other things in Proverbs. It's a great read if you ever want to. You know, if you want to wonder where to start when you're following God, Proverbs is a great place because it's little words of wisdom that'll help you along the way, and they're bite-sized and easy. So when you're start, start, you start sitting here today saying, oh, I'm really going to start following you. I'm going to start loving you. I'm going to start loving my neighbors as myself. Just hop into Proverbs and get a few things here and there and just stick with it for the next year and just decide you'll give it a year. But if you come across, I came across this one, and I like this one. Uh, this came across from actually being in a study and studying about this. So the way the NIV Bible says to translate this, it's very easy for us to understand, but it does lose some of the... Uh, of the, artist, the artistry of the, what the proverb is. It says this. It, so it's, oh, thanks. Proverbs 16, 3. It says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. So get that. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. The, the establish the commit, actually. The word commit in there, if you get and you do a more of an in-depth word study on that, that actually use the imagery back in Hebrew of roll it. The, the word really would be roll to. And so what they're really what saying is roll to the Lord whatever you do. I just kind of like that imagery. It, it's the same thing, commit. In other words, roll it out of your hand, roll it into God's hand. It's the same thing as commit. But there's something really there that's a little more tangible for me when I was starting to worry about things early in the morning about just saying, just roll that to God. But it doesn't say if you roll it to God, everything's going to be rosy or you're going to get exactly what you want. It says something really different that I don't hear in church a whole lot. It says, commit to the Lord or roll to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. So we all have plans. We all set goals. We all have purposes that we establish for ourselves. God's saying, roll that over to him, and he will establish it. Meaning he's going to make your plans happen. But, but you get the idea, when you have to roll your plans over to God, you're going to change it. You're not going to send, how can you roll a plan for just self-benefit? I want to be rich. I just want to be rich. You know, I saw this house on the lake. Man, that would be a cool place to wake up in every morning and just go sit out and look at the lake. Man, I would be so relaxed. I would be so peaceful. I'd probably pray every day if I got that big fancy house on the lake. Why, I might just be a decent guy if I had that. And then God says, roll that over to him. Roll it. Oh, that's what I want. And I start to roll it, and I realize, I'm not rolling that over to God. All of a sudden, my will starts to come into a line with his because I realize whatever plans I'm going to make for the day, I'm going to roll over to God for him to establish those plans. And because I've read a little bit of my Bible, because I've read a few, heard a few messages, I got a sense that God doesn't want me to be selfish. God doesn't want me to place myself first. He wants me to be walking with him, and he can't walk in evil. He can't walk in selfishness. So I, for me to be able to walk with him, I'm going to roll those plans over to him. So the plans for your spouse to start coming to church. The plans for your physical healing. The plans for getting rid of the pain every day. All of this stuff, you have to start rolling over to God, and he'll establish your plans, and your plans will be his plan. And he's going to start bringing that together, and he'll start convicting you of the things that, well, when I get up in the morning, you know what? I'm going to get even with that guy, the guy that mouths off to me every day at work. I'm going to go out there and set a score. We had a good friend who swore he told us that he... He had a little book where he wrote down everybody's name that wronged him since kindergarten because he was a little tiny kid when he was little and then he got to be a big, huge, he had to be your size. <laughs> you know. And, and he's like, ah, I'm going to make everybody pay who kicked me around. you know. And, it's, and, so, and Paul would talk about going up to somebody's house and calling them out to the front yard. He's like, you are messed up. You've got to get rid of that kind of, that kind of hate. <laughs> you know. And Zach goes, oh, I got rid of it all. And he said, but put my little book away and I moved on with my life. Roll that plan to God. Sit there and go with your little book. Okay, today's the day I start getting even. And you go, try, and hey, God, give me the next address. You know God will give you an address to? To somebody who will help talk you out of it. To somebody who's going to help you find your way home. And so that's the kind of stuff that it gets. So that one, Proverbs 16.3,
Commit or roll to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. That's a great one just to think about for the next week. It's a lot more complicated than it looks, and yet it's very simple. And that's what the whole thing I was hoping to get across to you all is God can be incredibly complex and deep, but at the same time incredibly simple for us. And so if it's so simple, what does it really boil down to? Well, it boils down to this one, the calling of Matthew. As Jesus went there, he saw the man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. That's our week. Amen? Amen. Thanks, everybody, who made this Sunday happen. All of you people in the back, and thanks for the great prayers. And, and more than anything, thank you for all that was sitting here. It was, I just had a wondrous time with the music and, and, uh, and just had, seeing everybody clap along and sing along and all that stuff. I heard voices uh, singing along around me. And they sounded good because, you know, I know what a bad voice sounds like. So, so anyway, thank you all for coming along and being here. Amen. Oh, and thank God for Josh. So let's, let's leave in prayer for the day. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us, this body of Christ right here. We say the church, we call it the church, and we're not talking about our fireworks stand. We're not talking about the building. We're talking about the church, all these brothers and sisters that I'm here with. We give thanks for them coming out. We had special prayers. We have special needs for so many people. I thank my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law for coming out and joining us today and being here with us. It just get, it's just nice to have other people around that you know and love. But it's also great to see new people that I have not gotten a chance to know and know that they're still pursuing the good things, the higher things, the things that you want us to have. The things that we could, the plans that we could roll over to you. Help me, God. Help me, help my friends here. Help my brothers and sisters here to roll over to you everything that they've got as plans. So those plans shape and become your plans, and we walk more consistently with you. Thank you, God, for all you do, but mostly for who you are and how much you care for us. And we just pray that we show it back to you at least now and then that we do love you with all our hearts and all our minds and all our souls, and we are willing to follow you. Amen. Woo! Good stuff. And we're done. Oh.